More than 20 million mail-in ballots are arriving at mailboxes across the state of California right now. Coming up, we'll tell you how to ensure that your vote counts and how to track it. Plus, you get all these voter guides in the mail. Which ones are legitimate and which ones are phony? We have an easy way for you to find out. All coming up. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and by now you probably have received your mail-in ballot from the state of California through your county registrar of voters office. We've got 20 million plus mail-in ballots that were mailed out late last week, and most voters actually are telling us that they've received their ballot. Uh, Don't get freaked out. If you haven't received your ballot, give it another day or so. And there's a way for you to get a replacement ballot if it doesn't arrive. And I'll I'll explain why in just a moment uh, or how. Uh, But first, let's cover uh, the balloting process, how to fill out the outside of the ballot if you do want to mail in your ballot, how to track your ballot. And of course, I do want to talk about these phony voter guides that a lot of shady organizations are sending out. You really got to be careful. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to separate out fact from fiction and figure out which are the legitimate voter guides and which are the phony ones. So let's first start out with your your ballot. Uh, You may have received this. This is the ballot book. Okay, this is not actually a ballot. You probably received this ballot book um, from the state of California covering state propositions, and then your local county will send you a book as well. You you should already have one of these. Um, The reason why I want to start with this book is that it has information on the candidates, local candidates that are on your ballot, uh, some of the candidate statements. It also more importantly has information on where you can drop off your ballot in, in, in person. So there are vote center locations printed in this book. And this is where you can drop off your ballot if you don't wanna use the postal service, ballot drop box locations. But more importantly, it, it tells you which areas which uh, uh, locations are staffed and when they're going to be staffed. That's important in case you have a problem with your ballot or someone in your household has a problem. So this book is important for not only candidate information, but it also includes the polling locations that are open well before uh, the election day, where if you have any problems, that you can go and get those problems resolved rather than having to drive all the way down to the central location of the county registrar or voters office. So this is your local election book. It is important. Now, all this information, by the way, if you do, if you don't get, if you didn't get a book or you've lost it, you threw it away, you can get it on the county website for your county that you live in. Um, so that's your book. Second is your ballot. My ballot actually has not arrived. I think it's going to arrive today. But um, let me share with you what the ballot will look like. This is for San Diego County. Um, and the ballot actually uh, has barcodes at the top. It says official ballot. Um, it's usually uh, printed on white cardstock legal paper. There's bubbles for you to fill in uh, because the uh, state of California uses uh, scanning machines to tabulate your, your, your vote. Uh, so you have a ballot and then you have the envelope. And this is important because If you want to use mail-in ballots, uh, and in a moment I'll tell you why, voting by mail this week and this week alone, the first week of the election is actually perfectly fine, provided that you track your ballot and verify it's counted. But you need both the envelope and the ballot itself. Uh, So what you will do is you will fill out your ballot, fill in the bubble, um, and uh, don't worry about... uh, when you put your your um, uh, pen to the paper, if it bleeds through, the, the ballots are designed so that even if something bleeds through, it doesn't affect a vote on the opposite side. It only reads where the actual bubbles are on each side. And they're not allowed to design the ballot so that a bubble on one side is exactly uh, uh, overlapping with the bubble on the other side. So you can use a, a basic pen to fill in your, 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 uh, your ballot. Um, we'll get to voter guides in a moment because the ballot is incredibly deceptive. The ballot propositions, the state politicians are lying to you on the ballot in terms of uh, what the ballot props do and the the hidden tax increases. More on that in just a minute. But I want to go through the mechanics of uh, 
making sure that your vote counts. So you fill out your ballot, then you put it into the envelope and you seal it. Now, but you have to do another thing on the envelope itself, okay? So here is Contra Costa's envelope, the outside of their envelope. So this is the yellow mailing flap for San Diego County, but on the opposite side, and I don't have the picture, uh, is something that looks like what Contra Costa County has. And here you'll have a box that says voter sign here. You have to sign your envelope. If you're mailing in your ballot, you must sign the outside of the envelope. I cannot tell you how many people have their ballots disqualified because they don't sign the outside of the envelope. So please sign the outside of the envelope and date it. You might say, well, I don't remember how my signature was on my voter registration. Don't worry. Sign it to the best of your ability because you're going to track your ballot and verify it was counted. In a moment, I'll tell you what to do if your signature is rejected. And it does happen. It's not a big deal. We can fix it but sign and date your ballot. Now, I don't like this practice, but there is something called ballot harvesting. If you hand your ballot to anyone other than a blood re relative to return, uh, then they have to write their name here and they have to sign their name. This is not your signature in your name. This is the person that you give it to, okay? They have to print their name and they have to sign. Uh, I don't like ballot harvesting. If, if you uh, do have a trusted friend that trusts you and wants you to take the ballot in on their, on your, on their behalf, then please do let, you know, make sure that they sign the box as the voter and then you sign up here as the harvester. Uh, so that's the important part about the outside of your envelope. If you want to do mail-in ballots, um, if you want to drop off your ballot at a drop box, you must also sign the outside of your envelope because who knows you know who this person is you're supposed to sign your ballot uh, when you do it at a drop box uh, if you go into a polling location you can go in with your envelope and your ballot and i always suggest walk in manually and manually vote at a polling location do not put it in the envelope um, but i actually don't think you should be going into polling locations unless you have a problem more on that in just a moment okay so you vote this week by mail or you drop it at a drop box this week I don't like using the mail after the second week of the election because it really cuts down on the time for you to verify that the Postal Service has delivered your ballot and that it counts. So if you're getting this video late or if you're dragging your feet, shame on you, always vote early, um, then in the last two weeks of the election, anywhere past like October 20th, um, I would suggest going into a polling location that is staffed. And again, that's why I wanted you to keep this book or check out the website in your county, because that way you can vote in person. Uh, you don't have to go through the postal service. Um, now, there's nothing wrong if you have a late voter who says I can only vote by mail or drop it at the drop box. It's a little more risky. They don't uh, have the ability to verify it's counted sometimes before the election. But hey, any route to vote, let's make sure we get the best turnout possible. But I do encourage you to vote early this week or next week by mail or at the Dropbox location. Because here's what you're going to do. And this is why you can trust the mail. This is why I want you to vote early. You're going to be able to track your ballot. Go to trackmyballot.org. This is a site that we put together uh, with a lot of helpful information in one spot. It's one-stop shopping. Trackmyballot.org. Here, uh, you can check your voter registration or register to vote. And by the way, you can register to vote all the way up to 8 p.m. on election day. So no one has an excuse not to vote in California. People say, oh, mom, dad, I, I, I'm not registered. That's OK. We're going to get you registered right now. Um, here you can find polling locations throughout the state of California. Again, they are in your book, but there's a one stop shop on our website for all the polling locations. And then, of course, track my ballot. Track my ballot goes into the state's ballot track system, which is integrated with all the counties. And it will allow you to verify that once you drop your mail, your, your mail in ballot at a drop box or put it in the mail, track your ballot about 48 to 72 hours later, because you're giving the postal service or the registrar of voters time to pick up your ballot and, 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 and uh, receive it. But within 72 hours, start tracking your ballot. And you can do that at this website. And within at least a week, it should be counted. If not, then I'll tell you how to fix it. Uh, you also may receive an email or a text from the Registrar of Voters letting you know that your ballot is on its way to you 
or that your ballot, once you return it, they'll tell you that your ballot was received and counted. It's pretty handy dandy. Again, it's the same system as ballot tracks. What you want to do is make sure that you vote early by whatever mechanism, because the goal is to make sure well in advance of the election that your ballot was A, received in, received and B, counted, and that therefore your signature matched. Now, what happens if your ballot is returned and it doesn't say within a few days or at most a week that it was received and counted? Well, then you have a problem and I want you to fix it. Or what happens if it says that your ballot was received but rejected because of bad signature? Again, you have a problem. That's where you go into one of those polling locations I told you about and you let them know my ballot was not received or counted. I want to vote with a provisional ballot. You also can go in and say my signature was rejected. Give me a form to verify that my signature should be counted. And your signature the second time around actually doesn't have to match what's on their record. You just have to verify that, yes, that's my ballot. Yes, this is who I am and I want to vote. It's a weird system, but hey, I want to make sure your ballot counts and this is the, the, the system we have to follow. If you have any questions about this, you can uh, reach out to us at reformcalifornia.org, reformcalifornia.org. We have a help desk to help voters when they have problems. And we do want to hear from you when you have a problem, particularly if there's anything suspicious, because we want to make sure that we flag any election integrity problems. But we don't see that happening if you use this system. Um, that's why you should vote early. If you want to vote later in the process, then shame on you because you're risking your vote. But the only safe way to vote later in the process, number one, is not to go on election day because you're just creating long lines. Uh, but uh, number two, go the Friday, Saturday, or Sunday prior to election day. Many of the ballot uh, polling stations are open starting October 26th, full service. Um, all of them are open the weekend before the election. So go to an in-person manned, staffed, voting location and vote in person, but not on election day, because I don't want you to create long lines on election day. On election day, I'm trying to turn out low, low information, low propensity voters. So please don't create uh, a barrier for me to convince them to vote. I need to make sure that it's easy peasy to get them in and out of those polling locations. And if you vote on election day, you're just creating a, a darn line for me to have to compete with. Okay. The other thing that is important is that you use voter guides. And Reform California has the most popular conservative voter guide in the state of California. We give you the plain English voter guide, and here it is. Uh, if you go to trackmyballot.org, you can click under voter guides, or you can get this at reformcalifornia.org. Here's our statewide voter guide, but we also have regional voter guides where we give you a plain English description of the 10 statewide pa ballot propositions. Remember, the politicians are lying to you. They have a lot of deceptive language on these ballot props. We give you plain English descriptions. Plus, we have a video for each of the props if you want to do an eight-minute um, primer on each of the props. Uh, or if you're interested in, in learning more about one particular proposition, watch our short videos that we have on these. Uh, plus, for many of the regions, we have local voter guides that not only ca capture those 10 statewide propositions, but they also go into the local propositions exposing 470 plus tax hikes hidden on your ballot. And we also grade candidates and endorse candidates for everything from top of the ticket down to school board and judge. So go to reformcalifornia.org, click under voter guides, or go to trackmyballot.org and click under voter guides. Now, you may get other voter guides in the mail. 99% of them are complete and utter junk. Throw them away. Do you know that the voter guides, most of those voter guides are pay to play? Pay to play. Reform California's voter guide, we do not give an endorsement to someone based upon a contribution or what they give uh, to the effort. Our voter guide, our endorsement is not for sale. We grill candidates. And a lot of times we go after Republicans who've raised taxes and we don't endorse them. Um, so we are uh, very careful to use our methodology and our philosophy and our criteria to award any sort of endorsements. But other groups out there are pay to play operations where they take money from bad candidates and put them on voter guides to try to deceive voters. And I tell you right now, throw those voter guides away. If you're wondering whether something is a good or bad voter guide, check out this website. 
cal-access.sos.ca.gov slash campaign slash committees. And here's where you can type in the name of the voter guide and find out if they're selling their endorsement. Um, so for example, there's one called Continuing the Republican Revolution. It's a scam. Uh, it is uh, awarded to people not based upon criteria, but whatever they're willing to pay. And if you take a look at their financial reports, um, you've got so many um, uh, candidates that are, are are buying on to their slate mailer. So let me. This is a, a, a hundred fifty one thousand dollars, six hundred eighty five dollars, paid by different candidates for the year so far for this voter guide, and it goes out to Republicans, and people think that oh, everyone on this voter guide are Republican. No, that's not necessarily true. They basically pay to put themselves on. Uh, here's another one. You, you think, well, I'm not interested in Republicans, but I'm interested in fiscal conservatives. The budget watchdog uh, newsletter. Again, it is pay to play. Let me go down here and tell you how much money they've raked in. Oh, they've got a lot of money. Look at all these. Um, this is their latest as of 926. They've gotten, oh, $1.1 million of candidate cash for their budget watchdog newsletter. Again, no guarantee that the people there are fiscal conservatives. And here's one on public safety. Uh, it is the California Public Safety Voter Guide. Uh, let's see how much money they've been lining their pockets with. Let's see here. Um, $30,000 so far. So some of these uh, voter guides are small, some are large. That million dollar one is creepy. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, throw them away. They're garbage. Pay to play. Go with our Reform California Voter Guide, if I may say so myself, because we do not bend on our principles. We basically go after any politician who um, tries to raise taxes, who's anti-border security, who's anti-police, anti-parent. We vet these candidates. We sort out the liberal, crazy extremists from the common sense, reform-minded candidates. So check it out at reformcalifornia.org. We're also mailing our voter guide out and you know we need your support um, because we are principle-based and we don't rely on candidates and dark money packs to give us money to buy endorsements. We need grassroots contributions from people like you who believe that voters should be given the truth about what's really on the ballot and the types of candidates that they have to choose from please go online to reformcalifornia.org, reformcalifornia.org, and chip in a contribution. Put fuel in our tank so we can text it and email it and mail it out to voters in time for the election. Hope this helps you vote. Uh, gets you the mechanics of how to return your ballot and track it. Also, how to sort out fact from fiction on these crazy voter guides that are filling up your mailbox. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.